Wrist pain is by far the most common complaint I get when working with pros and gamers. And often when they look for resources online to help, they're told to stretch, they're told to rest, wear a brace, maybe take some medication. But sorry, that's only going to be helping you in the short term. It's not going to provide you with that long-term relief. And today, I'm going to show you seven of the best exercises for the hand, the wrist, and the forearm. And we're going to use science and anatomy to help you understand why these are the best use of your time. And you will know exactly which exercises to use for pain in different regions of your forearm and your hand. Gaming injuries involve tendons and muscles, not the carpal tunnel syndrome as many believe. This has been shown quite frequently, not only in office workers, but also with musicians requiring repetitive, precise, and delicate movements, often in non-ergonomic positions. A 2013 study looked in the common musculoskeletal problems of musicians, indicating the development of chronic tendinopathy for the muscles in the wrist, elbow, and shoulder girdle. Gamers fit in between these two populations with repeated mouse and keyboard movements with high precision required. High mechanical skill can put a lot of physical stress on our tendons. The muscles in our forearms and hands are responsible for every possible movement in gaming. The muscles on the anterior side of the forearm are known as the flexors. These muscles are mainly responsible for flexion of the finger and wrist, as well as pronation. If you have pain along the front side of the wrist, you want to work on strengthening these flexor muscles and tendons. On the posterior side are the extensors, which are responsible primarily for wrist and finger extension, along with supination. And if you have pain on the posterior side, you want to work on these muscles and tendons. Together, they contribute to wrist radial and ulnar deviation, along with gripping. What about the hands? The muscles in our hands are responsible for pinky and thumb opposition, along with finger flexion, abduction, and adduction. This exercise helps to relieve stiffness in the wrist extensors. Stiffness is common when the muscles are overused, and they're often in a contracted state to protect the tissue from further damage leading to lack of proper circulation for healing and reduction of inflammatory molecules. Stretches help with this contracted state and blocked circulation. To perform this exercise, make sure that your elbow stays straight and you're going to be making a fist. This will help to lengthen the wrist and finger extensors. Then use your other hand to apply some overpressure to ensure that you're getting a moderate stretch. This exercise will target the wrist flexors, and as we discussed, these muscles are responsible for bending the wrist and fingers, as well as gripping. So for PC players, this might mean pressing mouse 1, mouse 2, as well as picking up and moving the mouse repeatedly during your aiming and flicking and tracking movements. And for console players, that might mean gripping the controller or pressing the trigger buttons with your index and middle finger. The next set of exercises will stretch the smaller muscles in your hand, and they're, as we said, are responsible for finger flexion, finger abduction, and adduction, as well as assisting in gripping. We'll start with the lumbrical stretch, which helps to bend your finger starting at your knuckle. We use this muscle when we're clicking mouse 1, mouse 2, as well as pressing the trigger button. In order to perform this exercise, you're going to be bending all of your knuckles as shown, putting your other hand over your knuckles, and then bending it backwards until you feel the stretch deep in your hand. Next, we're going to be stretching the pads and dabs, the muscles that abduct and adduct your fingers. These muscles are used when gripping the mouse, as well as during a modified claw or claw-based grip during console games. To perform this exercise, you're going to be spreading a pair of fingers using your other hand to split them apart close to the base of your knuckle and you will feel the stretch deep in your hand. The next set of exercises are going to focus on strengthening and improving motor control of the muscles and tendons we use as gamers. It's going to utilize the tendon neuroplastic training approach which is an externally paced muscle and tendon strengthening protocol that helps to improve strength, endurance, 
and activation. And also in a recent study for an individual dealing with lateral elbow tendinopathy, use of this protocol for eight weeks was able to show significant improvement. The way that we're going to incorporate this approach is to ensure that we're performing the exercise at a specific cadence. <laughs> This exercise works to strengthen the wrist flexors and requires a dumbbell of 3 to 5% of your own body weight. And what you're going to be doing is sitting at the edge of a chair. You can also do this at the corner of a table or leaning over onto your thigh using the armrest as shown, supporting your forearm, and then curling your fingers down all the way back up with the dumbbell and going at a cadence of three seconds to go down, three seconds to come back up, and then you repeat. This exercise targets the extensors and is very similar to the wrist flexion exercise. All you're gonna be doing is, again, using the chair, the edge of a desk, as well as your thigh, and resting your forearm there, making sure it's supported, slowly moving up and down, working at a cadence of three seconds up, three seconds down, and then repeating. The next two exercises are working on a combination of both the extensors and the flexors, but are specifically targeting the movements of bending your wrist towards the thumb and bending your wrist towards the pinky, that side-to-side -side movement. If you have pain in either of these areas, this exercise will be helpful for you. All you're gonna be doing is very similarly to the extensors and flexors, you are supporting your form, but this time with your palm in neutral, bending your wrist up and down in a slow and controlled manner, at the cadence of three seconds up, three seconds down, and you can make it more difficult by holding the bottom of the dumbbell as shown. And with ulnar deviation, what you're going to be doing is similar, but this time you're going to be in standing, keeping your elbow straight, then bending your wrist up towards the ceiling, three seconds to go up, three seconds to go down, and then repeating. This last exercise also targets the flexors and extensors, but is a little more specific as we're working on discrete muscle fibers controlling individual fingers when we're clicking the mouse and using our controller. We're gonna be using the ulti grip and we're gonna start with fingertip contact that prioritizes the use of a certain muscle and then the middle pad which prioritizes a use of a different muscle all functioning frequently when we're using the mouse and our controllers. This exercise is straightforward as you're just going to be holding it in the base of your palm and then squeezing in a slow and controlled manner. You can also make this exercise a little more functional to gaming by turning your palm down, strengthening it in that gaming specific position. So to sum up this video, stretches and strengthening exercises both contribute to long-term health for your forearm, wrists, and hands as gamers. Strengthening or exercises 4 to 7 are the most important as they improve your overall endurance and capacity to play for longer with less pain. Perform stretches regularly between games to address overuse related stiffness and help with recovery for cumulatively strained muscles. Then use tendon neuroplastic training or externally paced exercise to help you improve endurance and motor control of your wrist and hand muscles. Finally, I want to remind you it is all about how you manage your load throughout the days, the weeks, and the months you are gaming. Even if you exercise consistently, if you game for 14 hours a day without rest, you are going to develop pain. Stretch during downtime, build up your tissue endurance so you can handle those longer hours. And factor in recovery days if possible. For step-by-step -step help with any of your injuries or discomfort that you might have, check out our Patreon. We work with you to identify exactly what you're dealing with, along with all the potential contributing factors, and then develop an individualized plan for you to fix your issue. And that is all everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give the video a like if you enjoyed this and leave a comment below with any topics you want me to cover next time. It also really helps if you share this on Twitter, Reddit, or any other social media platform and look out for more science-based exercises for other body regions.